Now, you remember the days of carburation? You had to start the car, pump the pedal, and wait a while? Not the case here, fuel injected. Today on Tech Garage, we're gonna take a carbureted engine, and we're gonna turn it into fuel injection. You wondering why? Welcome to Tech Garage presented by Advance Auto Parts. Now our charger here, power, performance, fuel economy, fuel injected. That's what I'm all about. On the other hand, you may have a carbureted engine. No problem with carburation. I just kind of like the fuel injection idea of the good atomization and everything that's going on. Carburetors, they've been around for years. You can see the carburetor right here on the intake manifold along with the old ignition system. That's why I don't like carburation. But anyway, you tune it up, it'll do just fine. Now we're gonna take our carbureted system and we're gonna totally transform it to fuel injection. How are we gonna do that, you might ask? Terminator, EFI system by Holly. True turnkey package. It all starts right here with the throttle body, the fuel injected throttle body. This actually has the injectors built in, all the sensors, the idle air control, everything you need. Throttle position sensor, all the computer sensors you need for fuel injection. And guess what? One plug and play, almost too easy. Because we're fuel injecting it, that means we're gonna actually have to come over here and boost the fuel pressure. So you see our fuel pump right here? It's a high volume fuel pump, good up to 600 horsepower it'll do great on this engine we come up and then also with fuel injection we're gonna have to return it we return it here through the pressure regulator back to the tank and we'll learn all about fuel injection as we go through the show also we got the whole wire harness here this wire harness has everything labeled right on it relay pump throttle body whatever it may be simple as just plugging it in programming it ready to go once you plug it in, you got the programmer right here. I just touch a few things and guess what? The cool part is, now this is the ECM right here. Now that's gonna learn all the parameters of the engine and it's gonna run good after that. We're actually gonna bolt it up to this YN intake manifold. It can go on that street dominator, but this is a better choice. So we're just gonna put it on this YN sweet intake manifold. And we're gonna get rid of that old HEI ignition system because with this fuel injection, we want the spark power. So we're gonna put this MSD system on there. This is a true turnkey package. This motor is gonna run just like a fuel injected 5.7 Hemi is. But you know, I gotta get Brian over here to pull this intake manifold off. So we need to get started. Well, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, a PRW engine stand, you guys are taking the easy way out because it's easy access to everything. And you're absolutely right. We understand that in your engine bay, you've got all kinds of stuff to navigate that gets in the way as you tackle a project like this. But we believe it's so important for you to see everything that we're doing on this project and understand it that we'd rather go ahead and show it to you this way on the PRW stand so you get the same look, feel, and flow that we do as we navigate the project. Step one is to remove the coolant neck. We'll also have to remove the ignition system and of course the fuel line and the PCV vapor return line. And I'm gonna go ahead and start removing the intake manifold bolts after I get this neck out. We're gonna get this old manifold off quickly. Brian, I can't let you go with this alone, so I'm gonna give you a hand. I'll go ahead and start pulling this ignition system out right here. Got the bolt loose, I was messing with the timing earlier, so I can pull this out right here. Now, if you're doing this at home, maybe you don't wanna go ahead and pull this out until you remove the cap. Why? Well, you can actually index it, and I'll show you. If I put this out here, take these last ones out. And on this coolant line, the chances are you're gonna have antifreeze seep out this coolant line, so make sure you have a drain pan down at the bottom to capture that. We don't have that to worry about. Well, you notice the rotor button right here? It's pointing in this direction. You wanna index that if you're just gonna put the distributor back in and not turn the motor over. Now, we're putting a whole new ignition system, so I'm not gonna worry about it. We'll time it a little later, and we'll show you how to do that. So I'm gonna pull that out. Now we got a good access here. I'll pull the PCV line out. Get Perfect. it out of the way. Thank you. I'll grab the fuel line right here. Mm -hmm. Work it off. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Let those bolts fall. I'm okay with that. All right, we'll pull these all these intakes. Four intakes. It's really not that bad. Good practice is let's cover up all these holes. Make sure we don't drop anything as we remove pieces and parts. Okay, we're clear there. I'm gonna get the spark plug wires off over here for you. Like Brian said earlier, if you're doing one of these newer cars, hats off to you. There's a lot more that you're gonna have to deal with, but our Spartan engine here, 
It's gonna run great when we get this done. I'm excited. Okay, I think that intake manifold's loose and ready to come up, John. You wanna make sure you get a buddy if you're under the hood, because sometimes they're heavy, and you wanna kinda bring them straight up and out so the coolant don't go into the engine. And if you're working by yourself, consider getting a lift to pull it straight up out so you can control it, not hurt yourself in the process. This is an old heavy intake manifold. I'm excited that new one's really lightweight. Yeah, and this is great, because you can see the actual ports here to the heads. You can see the intake passages, the coolant. We're gonna replace these gaskets. You know, we throw on that new intake, we'll be fuel injected. Absolutely. And we'll start that as soon as we return with more Tech for Garage right after this break. This edition of Tech Garage, presented by Advanced Auto Parts, is being brought to you by Holly, the undisputed leader in fuel systems for over 100 years. Stage 8, the world's best lodging fastener. Steel rubber, quality crafted rubber parts and weather stripping. And by Advance Auto Parts. Let's get you back to the garage. Welcome back to Tech Garage. Let's take a look at what we're doing. You know, we're replacing our carburetor here with a fuel injected system. This is a multi-port injected system. It's running the injectors, but we're gonna put on our Holly EFI Terminator, which blends them both. I think Brian's got us underway. Let's go check him out. Well, John, we're one step closer. Now, it's really important to get all these mating surfaces everywhere the new gaskets and seals are gonna sit really clean and debris free. And if you knock something loose, get out the shop vac and get that out of the way. I'm pretty happy with this surface. It looks pretty good all the way around. So the next step is to install the seals. Now, we've got an entire new Felpro engine gasket set here that we're using. And of course, the seals only go in one way. Now, set the seals in, get them pretty tight, firm where you want them, and then the new gaskets are gonna actually hold them in place on these tabs. You'll see that in just a moment. Set them in. Now, some people, a little bit old fashioned, old school here, like to use some RTV here down in these corners. There's nothing wrong with that. You just don't have to use RTV like you once did as the primary seal. Not that I've ever done that, of course. New gasket set goes in place, and you'll see the tabs sit right down on the seals and they only go one way, this side up. You gotta follow that. New gasket on the other side, grab the tabs, set it down, everything is in place. I like one final visual inspection here. Again, I'm looking for debris, dirt, anything that doesn't belong that I need to remove. So I'm gonna remove my rags, fold them over inside, capture all of that, reset this gasket just a little bit because I bumped it, and we're good, and the new Y-end intake manifold. Now look at that. We told you that other one was heavy and this one was light. Well, here's the evidence. It's gonna sit right in place. I like to go very gently here. Make sure I'm lined up. It only goes in nice and snug one way. Happy with that. Tolerances are good. Holes are lined up. She's seated down there pretty well. And you'll notice in the coolant passage, I have a rag in here. Again, I don't want anything down in there that doesn't belong. But at the back of the engine where the distributor goes, John's got exactly what we need to understand how to get this thing timed right. That's right. Now, you remember we pulled that distributor out? Once we pulled that distributor out, our timing is just off. We don't know where it is. You can't just take this distributor and stick it in there. Now, MSD sent us this new Pro Billet distributor. This thing's sweet. It's gonna make a lot of spark, but we have to time the engine. How are we gonna do that? Well, it's pretty simple. We already looked up number one cylinder. You go to number one cylinder, you pull the spark plug out. And what we did is we turned it over till we felt that puff. That's a compression stroke. So what does that tell us? Well, it tells us the pistons up top, dead center, compression stroke, right there where we're ready to fire. So that's where we're gonna start on number one. Then just as importantly, I pull my cap off, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my distributor, and I'm gonna set it down. But the point here is, I want the actual rotor button to point towards that number one. Now it doesn't have to be exact, because when you put your cap on, we're gonna start with number one, and we're gonna work in the firing order all the way around. If you don't do that, it's not gonna fire. It's mm -hmm. out of firing order. Make sure that your harmonic balancer is dead on zero, top dead center, point towards number one, drop that in. This thing fits like a glove, it's perfect. We'll get that down in there. You know what, once we get that down in there, I'll bring over that coil. We got an SS blaster coil. We'll torque all these bolts to specifications, Brian. I'm getting so excited, man. This thing's about ready to crank. We're gonna put that Holly EFI Terminator system on this one as soon as we return with more Tech Garage presented by Advanced Auto Parts.
Welcome back to Tech Garage. Now Brian has us all hooked up. Let's take a look. The intake manifold's on, done. We used our ARP bolts. He's got them torqued to specification. Remember, he worked from the middle all the way out. He actually put the thermostat housing on and has that all bolted up. But you know, we didn't put the thermostat in for a reason. Later, we want to show you with this high flow pump here that Proform sent us. We want to show you the actual flow of the coolant, so we left it out. You don't want to do that. You want to make sure you put your thermostat in. Now it's time to turn our attention to that distributor. We got the distributor dropped in. This is our Pro Billet MSD distributor. We got it dropped in, but we also have it timed. Well, how do we do that? I told you earlier, we took the spark plug out at number one, we puffed it on the compression stroke. When we felt that puff, we took our harmonic balancer and we made sure we were right at top dead center, zero. And then I'll show you, if you pull this off, we dropped it in so the rotor button's actually pointing right towards number one. Not so much the cylinder as number one on the cap here for the wire. You can see the wire here, one, then we followed our fire in order, one, eight, six, five, whatever it may be. Just look at your service manual. Every fire in order is gonna be different, but remember to start at one and work your way around. Then we took our wires, our MSD, 8.5 wires, 40 feet of conductance and one foot of wire as we go down wrap. Man, we're gonna get the spark down there. Good insulation, low resistance. We put it in our Proform wire harness here, our loom, and put it into our spark plugs with our big boots. We're not gonna have any issues there. Everything's wired up there. Then we turned our attention to our coil. Now, we put a blaster coil on here. This is all a self-contained unit. And this is pretty cool because it's real simple. If you look over here, Got the distributor that comes down. We had three wires, couldn't be any easier. Orange, red, and black coming out. And then the plug from the coil supplied had the orange, red, and the black. So it was plug to plug, including one other gray wire was as simple as a tack wire. And you can see it right here, our blaster coil. This is a 70 to one turn ratio. This thing's capable of putting out 40,000 volts. Well, you might not need 40,000 volts. Engine like this, idle and may put about 12K down at the spark plugs, but think about this, high compression, under pressure, extinguishing that flame on that spark plug, we got 40,000 to keep the boost going. So I got my red wire right here. It's tied into the coil, and then my other red wire's coming over to actual power supply down from the battery, just like the schematic says. Here's my orange wire. My orange wire is on the other side. Well, what does that do? It pulses the primary side of the coil, creates that magnetic induction so we can get the spark, but our distributor here has a little pickup that allows it to pulse. I told you it was all a self-contained unit, and then I have the gray wire going up to the actual tack. Being a self-contained unit, I got a vacuum advance here so I can advance and retard with vacuum. This one's not gonna talk to the computer. You may have a system that talks to the computer, which is no problem. Holly gives you the actual link, you can plug right into it and it'll talk to the computer. Now it's time to turn our attention to the whole project. Ta-da, and the grand finale. We're talking about the EFI Holly Terminator and it's as simple as just setting it on and plugging it in and we'll be ready to go. But I wanna to explain to you, what's the difference between fuel injection and carburation? Well, carburation, you don't need that computer and a lot of inputs. Inputs, think about your eyes, your nose, your ears, senses, sensors. And then we have a couple of outputs and I wanna show them to you. Holly's got them all built in with one plug. Couldn't be easier. You look right here on the side, you have a map sensor. Now my map sensor plugs right in there, and what's that gonna do? Well, it's gonna sense manifold absolute pressure. These are all about fuel delivery. As we start to lose vacuum, I'm gonna need more fuel. I'm getting on it. I'm getting more power in there. I need fuel. This is gonna sense that. We also have a throttle position sensor right here. It's located on this side. Once again, total unit. Throttle position sensor, you sweep it up and down, it tells the computer where the throttle is from zero to five volts. It'll know if it's at half throttle, wide open throttle, why? Once again, fuel delivery, gotta get the fuel in there. And then what you have is you have an intake air temperature sensor and a couple external ones we'll look at. Those are all inputs, sensors. Now outputs on the other hand, we have a couple of outputs. Fuel injectors are an output. Once the computer decides what all these sensors are doing, he can open and close these for the fuel delivery. And we also have right here what's called an idle air control motor. The idle air control motor allows air to bypass the throttle plates. See, on this system, the throttle plates are actually closed. So if I bypass air, it's like a controlled vacuum leak. It's gonna be able to raise and lower the idle, which is really neat. And the cool part is, these are all just regular sensors, OEM sensors. You can go down to advance and pick these sensors 
filters up even with your EFI system and use them. And guess what? Your car in the driveway works exactly the same way. There's no difference. This is all high performance, cool stuff, but your car works the same way. Now, if you look right here on the screen, I can switch it over and you can see, Holly gives us phenomenal instructions here. It all starts right here at the battery. Now the battery has a red wire and a, and a black wire, heavy ground wire and a heavy power wire going down to the PCM. Brian's getting that wired up all right now for us. Then we come up and we needed a couple external plugs. We needed an oxygen sensor, a coolant temperature sensor. There's an optional fuel pressure sensor, which is nice. Then I come down here to the fuel pump. Well, we'll wire that up a little bit later because there's a lot involved in that when we start talking about a return system. I come down, we plug it in, we're good to go. Now you can see them right here on our engine. Actually, our oxygen sensor is located down on the actual header assembly. We had to weld a bong in there. You're gonna have to do that on your exhaust system, and then you need an oxygen sensor. You don't have that with a carburetor. This is the boss, this is the big player, this is the feedback, command corrects condition. This is the condition. So what's going on in that exhaust, whether it's rich, the computer's gonna tell this EFI system, take away fuel. If it's lean, since it's a lean condition down in the exhaust, computer's gonna tell this EFI system, add fuel. So you can see, this guy's a boss, you have to have him if you have an EFI system. One more is a coolant temperature sensor. Now my coolant temperature sensor is located right here. My coolant temperature sensor is gonna go into a coolant jacket. And this one here is a negative coefficient thermistor. I know those are big words, but listen, it just senses the coolant and with resistance either going up or down, tells the computer, hey, add fuel or take away fuel. Well, if the engine's cold, more fuel. As it heats up, we start getting better control on that fuel. And the cool part about this Holly system is that computer self-learning, it's gonna learn all that as this thing runs and all these parameters that are going on with all these sensors, it'll get better and better and better the more you drive it. Well, now you understand how it works. We'll be right back with more Tech Garage presented by Advanced Auto Parts. This episode of Tech Garage, presented by Advance Auto Parts, is being brought to you by Dustless Blasting. It's the future of surface preparation. AP Laser, leading the way. Lund, premium style, lasting performance. And by Advance Auto Parts. Let's get you back to the garage. Welcome back to Tech Garage. We are one step closer to getting our Spartan engine fired up. Now, when it comes to the ECM with your Terminator kit, you have a few considerations to make. You want to locate it either on the firewall or possibly an inner fender or even in the glove box to get it up out of the elements and away from heat. On our PRW stand here, we're going to locate it down below the exhaust manifold and out of the way. Now, Holly has done a great job preparing us for success on this whole project. They even gave us the wiring harness we need to get power from the Optima battery over to the ECM itself. And of course, that only connects one way, right in, locked in, and now we've got power to the ECM. I'll come back and secure that in a minute. The next step is the wiring harness. And if you're old school and you've ever had a Holly rebuild kit, you know that Holly puts everything in that kit you need, from the power valves, maybe even the jets and the gaskets, everything you need. They've put the same intelligence and planning into this wiring harness. All those sensors John talked about, they got a story to tell. They want to talk. So we've got to get connected to them. Considerations for the wiring harness are pretty straightforward. You want to follow the flow of the connectors and again, try to keep this beast up out of some heat and out of the way. So I'm going to go ahead and get this installed and start to lay it out, make all the appropriate connections. And then finally, fuel. We got to get this thing full of fuel because it really wants to work. There's higher pressure, it's a higher pressure fuel pump. We gotta get that in line. And even though there's not much distance between our fuel supply and the new throttle body, the functionality is gonna be exactly the same it is on, as it is on your vehicle. You gotta have more pressure and you gotta have the right fuel lines and connectivity. So we are one step closer and this thing's gonna run like a champ. Now our email question of the week has to do with the fuel system. Kurt from Los Angeles wrote in and he said he has a S10 pickup truck that lacks power. Just replaced the fuel filter and the catalytic converter and it's still sluggish. Looks like you're on the right track here. Something to do with air fuel. Now your car, it could have a throttle body depending on the year or multi-port. But you had a fuel pump, probably looks like this in the tank. This one puts out about 13 to 15 PSI with this throttle body. If you have a multi-port system, you're gonna need anywhere from 40 to maybe 60, could even be a little bit higher. So you want to check fuel pressure and current ramping of that fuel pump. Make sure that it's going all right and also check on your airflow. 
Kurt, yours is going to be real similar to ours over there on the Holly system, except your fuel pump's actually going to be located in the tank, and we got a pre-filter. But you can see ours here. It comes out of the tank through the pre-filter. It's going to go through the actual fuel pump itself, and then it's going to go through a fuel filter. You said that replaced that already? Good idea. It comes down, it's going to go through your throttle body or multi-port, and then it's going to return through a pressure regulator back to the tank. So you want to make sure you have good fuel pressure, and you want to make sure you got good airflow going in there. Remember, Kurt, spark, fuel, and air. If all those are in order, your car's going to run fine. And there's the last little bit of new oil. Oil change as promised. We got new 50-50 coolant in the system from Prestone. We got that topped off as well. We've tentatively checked for leaks. I think we're in good shape. And of course, you remember the ECM we installed down here? We had to get the parameter set on here. That was pretty easy to do. Yeah, nothing to that. Actually, on the control head itself, does everything. No laptop required. Remember, you had to sit over in the passenger seat and program everything? Not anymore. Remember throughout the whole show? Self-learning, really cool. Went to the wizard, GCF wizard, and set it up. TPS, we had to do a sweep. Take the throttle up, take the throttle back two times. It's ready to go. Go back home. I'll tell you what, the ignition system, ready. Proform water pump, whew, all this stuff, it should be good. Cross your fingers. I'll tell you, the old sweep I used to do on my carbureted engine was with my foot. So I'm really excited to hear how this thing runs. Let's see what happens. Here the fuel pump coolant circulating. Coolant. Got no leaks. No leaks, Fuel's looking good. good. Fuel's good. Ready? Fire it up, buddy. Woo. Strong, <laughs> strong, no leaks, nicely done. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. good stuff. I'll tell you, there's one thing, if you're old school like me, that remains the same. You know, and even though it's not a carburetor sitting on top of the engine to hold this guy, it goes on just exactly like a carbureted application would. Well, you know what? That's not only pretty, I got a perfect candidate vehicle for this engine here. Stay tuned. It's gotta go in something. Hey, thanks for watching. From our garage to your garage, thanks for watching Tech Garage. Production assistance for Tech Garage is provided by Chipola College, located in Mariana, Florida. Founded in 1947, Chipola was recently ranked as one of the top three community colleges in the United States.